Golden Tigers fans, get ready. It's time for Buckets, Blocks, Spills, Thrills, Steals, and Slams. Thunder! Tuskegee Basketball is next on the Golden Tigers Sports Network. Now, let's go courtside with the call. Here's Charles Ward. You talk about proper mix, we know that part of the mix for the Golden Tigers is that trio of Michael Roy, Bolin, and Abdul Rahim. Got to big big games from all of them this afternoon. Yeah, and... And we are live inside Chappie James with the set for Golden Tigers basketball on the Golden Tigers Network. Glad you could join us for the coverage. Charles Ward alongside Dwayne Walker with the call. And walk the Golden Tigers of the team get set to beat the Lady Marauders official state. You talk about proper mix, we know that part of the mix for the Golden Tigers is that trio of Michael Roy Bolin. And welcome everybody at Courtside. We're live inside Chappie James Arena getting set for Golden Tigers basketball on the Golden Tigers Sports Network. As usual, Dwayne Walker alongside Charles Ward with the play call. And Dwayne, men's action, Tuskegee trying to make it three wins in this four-game home set. They will meet the Marauders of Central State, a team struggling to get a win itself. Charles, even though they come in struggling, does Central State, you can't take anybody for granted. Despite their 2-13 and 13 record, you can't overlook Coach Antonio Davis' squad. Golden Tigers of Tuskegee coming with a win off of the Thoroughbreds of Kentucky State. A badly needed win in that contest. Very impressive with that win over Kentucky State. Listen, they're trying to make it three out of four in this homestand. It began with a huge victory over Allen, right? They lose to a tough top uh, 20 team in Benedict College. I believe they're ranked number 11. And then they get they come back with a victory against Kentucky State, and now they want to make it three out of four playing against the Marauders tonight. And it incidentally, we learned that Benedict got beat earlier this week against an SIAC opponent, so it just goes to Coach Taylor's comment all the time that it's really a gauntlet in the SIAC. Don't skip over that. The team that beat Benedict was the CAU Panthers, a team that this Golden Tigers team defeated in thrilling fashion earlier this season at Chappie James. That's why we repeat it. It is a gauntlet here in the SIAC. It continues this afternoon when the Golden Tigers host the Marauders of Central State. Tip off is just ahead on the Golden Tigers Sports Network. And we're back live inside Chappie James getting set for men's action on the Golden Tigers Sports Network. Golden Tigers winners against the Thoroughbreds of Kentucky State a couple of days ago. And we're joined by head coach Benji Taylor. And coach, thanks for joining us in the pregame. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. I know this is really happy circumstances for a 72-66 win over the Thoroughbreds. Talk about that ball game, your reflection on it. Well, we, uh, we finished fi uh, finally down the stretch. We still uh, didn't execute some things well. And they... Uh, they're pretty good, and but we we went up with the win just because we uh, we committed to going inside. We only took seven threes the entire game, so the kids understood the mission and stayed with the game plan, and it worked for us. Well, you shot over 50% from the floor, and then 50% yeah. plus from behind the arc. Just right. like you said, you only had seven right. made, but those were big baskets for you that made a difference in this contest. Yeah, you know we we were pretty efficient the other night, and. Um, we had, we, had to, we had to put that behind us pretty quickly because we have another good team coming in here. And as we said at the beginning of the year, 
The SIAC is a gauntlet, man, so today's going to be another tough game. Indeed. This is going to be the fourth one of the four-game home set for us here at Chaffee right. James. And I know all of them are important now, right. but getting that one against uh, Kentucky State and then perhaps another one here will really put some wind behind the sails of the Golden Tigers. Yeah, and we're going to need it going into the uh, – into the road series, and uh, we win this to be three out of four. Uh, going into the road series, we have a little bit more confidence. The young guys are have a little bit more pep in their step now, and and somehow I'm a little bit better coach just because we figured out how to win a game. You know, <laughs> that always helps, huh? Yeah. <laughs> we, <laughs> yeah. You've seen this Marauders team on Phil. What do you see from them in terms of how you got to play them? They got great, great size, two through five. They got great size, probably. The best size in the conference in terms of their wings are big. Uh, they can score three levels. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Jackson, number 11, is playing really well. He had seven for 10 from threes the other night against Spring Hill. So, yeah, we got, we got a work cut out for us. We're going to have to compete on the glass and, and, and play even better than we did Saturday. In the win against Kentucky State, we talked a little bit about it in the post game. was that we had that platoon if yeah, you will, as yeah. it relates to the guard yeah. situation. We'll expect to see the same here this afternoon. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're going to platoon it again and uh, then platoon it again, platoon <laughs> it again, and kind of go from there. We're really banged up and and uh, got a lot of guys really uh, on, in the bench area that have played great and has given us quality minutes. When you talk about quality minutes, you certainly got some from Martez. He had a double-double in the ball game against Kentucky State. But De'Anthony Pennington coming back and then a lot of starting to settle in a lot more, the more red weapons reps he's getting to play more. Yeah, he's getting more confidence with that hand. He's still in a lot of pain with it, but he's starting to get a better a feel for the game with the hand. He's a right-handed, he's a drip, you know, right-handed dribbler, right-handed shooter, so he's been a little bit of a problem, but he uh, played well the other night, and Martez was 26 and 13 again. Sure. So, yeah. Well, we hope we see the same from them again this afternoon against the Marauders of Central State. Coach, best of luck. Yeah, I appreciate you. Thank you very much. And Coach Benchy Taylor, as they get set to meet the Marauders of Central State, in Golden Tigers basketball, that's just ahead on the Golden Tigers Sports Network. Special thanks to Coach Benji Taylor and Charles War providing that interview as he makes his way back up to the broadcast location. Expecting him in about 15 minutes or so. Take him that long. <laughs> He's a slow poke, folks. Takes him a little while to get going. Oh, he, look, here he, here, he's, here he is now, folks. Folks, his tongue is sagging on the turf here, on, on the ground, on the cement block here. Take it away, Charles. I want to get you right now. You're huffing and puffing. You're huffing and puffing. <laughs> <laughs> they introduced the starting lineups here inside. Chappie James, glad you could join Dwayne and myself for this coverage. Tuskegee meeting the Marauders of Central State. Marauders will go with Willie Jackson, the senior. He leads the team in scoring. Joined by Raven Thomas, a sophomore from Detroit, leads the team in rebounding. Stephen Key II, the second, the sophomore from Cleveland, Ohio. He will start, as will DeMar Moore, the freshman from Sandusky, and they'll round up the five with the sophomore, Sean Page. All under the two of head coach, Antonio Davis. Central State Marauders at one and eight in conference play and two and 14 overall. Starting lineup for the Golden Tigers of Tuskegee. It's a familiar one. Martez Jones, the junior from Tuskegee, coming off that double-double performance against the Thorough Reds. He will start. As will DeAnthony Pennington, still favoring that right hand, the junior from Kansas City, Missouri. Pennington leading the team from the free throw line. He'll be joined by Kasami Draper, the sophomore from Conyers, Georgia. Draper, the leading scorer with 14.2 points per ball game. The freshman Chris Mickens gets to start this afternoon from Clemens, North Carolina. And Austin Taylor, the redshirt sophomore from Honolulu, he'll be in the lineup as well for Coach Benji Taylor. And the Golden Tigers, 4-11 and overall and 3-6 and in SIAC play. Looking to go 3-4 and here on this final game of this four-game home set here at Chappie James. Players are there. Byron Evans, Earl Lewis, and Torium Davis with the play call. The officiating crew quickly with a jumper to get things going. It's Willie Jackson, the leading scorer for the Marauders with his first basket of the ball game. And it is a three-pointer. Willie, <laughs> is my mind playing tricks on me or did he just come out here and shoot that three? Out about it. He is the leader for them. 19.5 points per ball game. Third in the conference in scoring. Half court set. Jones down low. Missed on the offering underneath the basket. Back over to Central State. Left side of the floor. Stephen Key. Now Moore handles it. Try to dump it down at the block. 
to Sean Page, the 6'8", 260-pound sophomore from Maywood, Illinois. And it's going to be interesting to see what that matchup is on the inside between Page and Martez Jones. Two physical specimens. That young man, Page, looks like a defensive tackle. Looks like he can hold his own. Marauders in full court pressures. Taylor works it across the timeline. Left side to Jones. Just underway here at Tuskegee. At the block, Jones on Page. Underneath the defense, Martez with his first basket of the ball game. Charles, if that's any indication of how it's going to go today, Martez Jones should excel. That was an explosive move to the basket. Jones, 26 points, 13 rebounds, and a six double double of the season against the Thoroughbreds. Sean with a basket Ooh. inside. I was going to say, Sean Page taking a page out of Moses Malone's book, following up that offensive rebound with the putback. Nice job by Page. Pennington slips down in the corner, but the basketball over to Kasami. Draper in the corner, hard move by Kasami underneath the defense, missed on the shot, followed and missed, but he was fouled on the second attempt. Did you see Kasami out on the perimeter, wheeling and dealing with the dribble? That was a nice combination move by the big fellow. Yeah, we often talk about it, that you want to get that basketball to him as close as you can with him being near the cylinder, but that time showed some good footwork down in the corner. Oh, he showed me some finesse with that move. Draper from the line. 69 of 121, misses on that first free throw. Charles definitely excited about this young group with another opportunity to get a win, another opportunity to play together to get it right as we move down the SIAC schedule, the meat of the schedule. Indeed, Draper with one of two from the line for his first points of all game. Tuskegee in Memphis on Saturday against the Magicians of the Orleans College as Page showing his range now. That time outside, Walker with a basket. He's got four of their eight points, and they lead by five early here, Charles, with exactly two minutes gone by. Taylor out front for Tuskegee. Left side, Pennington. Hard push by DeAnthony. Got some space. Jumper in space. And knocks it down for Tuskegee. DeAnthony, Charles, we saw last time out against Kentucky State, really thriving despite that. Right hand injury really muscled through and played well. 19.6 rebounds, two assists, one block, and one steal. And he did get that one technical foul called against him in that fray with Kentucky State. But a good, solid performance by the Anthony. First substitution in the ball game for Coach Taylor. It'll be Julian Watson in on the floor to replace Mickens in the lineup. Mickens with his first foul, Charles. He'll take a seat. 17-25 left in the first half. Jumper in the right corner, easily done there. Jackson really? was free. Jackson. Easy jumper. Where you have him at five? I've got him down. It's, uh, I've got five on it, Charles. Okay. <laughs> I'll match your five. We can go to the stone now. <laughs> Charles, hold on a second. I'm, I'm, next break, I'm gonna, we're going to have to go through something here. Okay, as an offensive foul. So, Call Charles, let me just go it. back. Go ahead. All right. So, remember when they came out of the game and I said, is my mind playing tricks on me? You know who Willie Jackson is, right? He's with the Ghetto Boys. And then when you said, how many do I have Jackson with? I said, well, I've got five on it. You still lost me. Oh, Charles. Oh, Charles. Is this a Buffalo thing? Or no, what? it's not a Buffalo thing. Aaron Tabor, are you with 25? me on this one? <laughs> okay, Is this Charles. Is 25 age ne thing? Or? Never mind, Charles. Never mind. Or is it mind. just, as usual, Walker <laughs> on a planet alone? <laughs> the ladder right there. Okay. Yeah. You got to get a little bit more direct on me, Walker. Just tell me. I'm trying to tell you something, you fool. <laughs> That's a three-pointer there by Jackson. He's doing it all over the floor here early on. Chip Culpepper out on the floor now for the Golden Tigers, dribbling right into that area where he gets doubled. Just down at the block to Evan Howell, who's on the floor. Evan pushes back out to Whitmore. Chris Christopher out on the floor as well. So almost a fresh five here for Coach Taylor. Whitmore with the jumper out front, missed on the shot. 
seems as though ever since Coach Benji Taylor's gone to that extended bench, it has paid off in recent games. Looking for some earlier formulas here to slow down this Marauders offense in terms of their scoring. Missed opportunity there. Jones with the rebound. And Whitmore with the basketball in the backcourt. Christian lost it near the sideline and doubled it out of bounds. And that's just a case of pressure there. Walker bursting a pipe right there. You could see that on Whit Christian's face as he was going down the court that he just was not comfortable dribbling that basketball. Coaching moment for Coach Benji Taylor. He's asking him why would he bring the basketball into that corner right there instead of in the middle of the floor? Because all you're doing is inviting a double team. The sideline acts as a defender and that's exactly what happened right there. As we get a look at the cheerleaders, the Golden Tigers cheerleaders are on the floor, on display. Yeah, we don't call them out enough, but they certainly do a good job of rallying the fans and the teams here inside Chappie James as they do with football as well. They perform here, second part of the school year, starting in January, everybody back on campus. And a special thanks to them for the, their hard work, and they rarely get recognized for it. 15.56 at the halftime. Good chance for us to remind you that it's a great day for Tuskegee Golden Tigers fans to get vaccinated. Many children and adults delayed vaccination during the pandemic, and they're still behind. It's critical that we take steps to get everyone back on track with their routine immunizations. Children and teens can catch up on their vaccinations, even if they start it late. Make sure you and your family are up to date on all recommended vaccinations, including COVID-19 and flu. Let's all do our part to get back on track. Don't wait. Vaccinate. For more information, visit alabamapublichealth.gov backslash IMF. Basketball action continues here in Chaffee James. Down in the corner, Jefferson again. This one, Jackson that is. This one's off the mark by Jackson. Finally missed one. Pennington back the other way. Anthony will work it on left, left side. Nickens slipped momentarily. They got it at the block to Jones. Jones on page. Jones underneath to the rack. Left it short on the cylinder. That's going to be an interesting matchup throughout this ball game. In traffic. Page, hard step, a correction down at the block. It's Antonio Reed and a whistle there as Reed penetrates. All that foul on Evan Howell. Wow, Charles, we haven't called his name an awful lot this season, getting some early time here in the early going with almost five minutes gone by in this first half of play. Howell's appeared in 12 ball games in the regular season, got in for a few moments in the Thoroughbreds contest just a couple days ago. But the early advent to play here this afternoon. 14-5 lead for the Marauders as Reed hits the first free throw. Howell takes a seat now, and Dylan Cambridge out on the floor for the first time for Tuskegee. <clears throat> Reed missed on the second. Rebound cleared by Draper in Tuskegee. A trail by nine. The Anthony, middle of the floor, left side Mickens. Pennington lost the dribble looking to the inside. Cambridge now, 10 to shoot, bounce pass, and taking his eyes off it was Jones and went out of bounds. Jones trying to find that defender behind him, kind of feeling there behind to get his hands on the defender and just lost sight of the basketball. Xavier Jackson out on the floor now for Coach Antonio Davis. Coach Davis in his fourth season at Central State. Slow start for them. Lost a heartbreaker against the Bray Badgers at Spring Hill a couple of nights ago in Mobile. Lost it right at the buzzer on a three-point shot. Kasami Draper on that block says, give me that. Just the sixth block of the year, second on the team in blocks this season. Right of the cylinder, Marauders try to inbound it. They'll push it out front. And this will be Arabian Thomas with the basketball. Right side now. It's Black, the junior. And out front with a rainbow three. That one's off the mark by Jackson. Pennington quickly back the other way. The Anthony. Slide pass to Draper. 
Draper trying to square on Thomas. Hard push by Kasami underneath. Thomas got a block there. Basketball over to Jackson. Two on two basketball back the other way. Raising and firing is black. He missed on the shot. Draper gives chase. Cambridge had it at the block. Got it off of the legs. And they're going the other way. Coach Taylor's not going to be happy with that call, though. Thought they had it off of the leg of one of the Marauders down low, but it'll it was that. That was the call. It'll go over to Tuskegee. Good piece of officiating yep. yeah. the uh, Byron, Errol, and Torian. They got together to find out who that basketball went out. The, the lead official didn't know who it went off of, asked for help, and he got it. Sure, made the right call there. The Anthony out front. They were working right side. They gave him space. He falls to the surface looking for a call. Did not get one there. Ball basketball over to Central State with 13.47 left. First half. Black works it right side. Bounce pass. Jackson will square with the jumper. Missed on the shot. But Reed got a backside rebound. And he missed on his putback. And finally Draper clears it out of there for Tuskegee. Pennington across the timeline. Works off a double screen. Now up top to Mickens. Chris surveys. Draper screens. They're trying to give and go there. Couldn't get it off as Cambridge handles. Eight to shoot. Pennington now. He'll raise, fire the rainbow three. Hit the iron, but missed on the shot. The sophomore Thomas got the rebound for Central State. Thomas, the team's leading rebounder, 6.9 rebounds per ball game. Eighth in the conference and rebounds per outing. Jumper left side, the runner off the mark by Reed, but it comes clear to Central State. They'll have another look. We're down to 12 30 moving in this first half of basketball. Skeegee leads the series against the Marauders, 8-4 overall. Today, the 13th meeting as Julian Watson and Austin Taylor come back out on the floor for Coach Taylor. Northern Tigers currently on a four-game win streak against the Marauders, dating back to 2022. Back to February 10th of 2020, the clock, the last win by the Marauders over Tuskegee. They have it now, they lead it 14 5. Jumper in the left corner, that one's off the mark. Watson tapped it around, almost tapped it into the basket for the Marauders. But it will go over to Tuskegee. William getting in the fray on the inside for the Golden Tigers. Charles, so far in this game, the Golden Tigers have only managed five points, and those points coming, two from Artez Jones, two from De'Anthony Pennington, and a free throw by Draper. They've got to get going on the offensive side of the basketball. They haven't scored in several minutes. Watson out front. Jordan, they gave him space. He'll raise fire, drains the jumper there for Tuskegee. Watson with confidence on that one. Immediate impact, Watson coming in off the bench to score those two. Seven point lead for Central State. They bounce it inside Thomas. Thomas turns, Jones swats. He's put into the second row behind the cylinder. That's an emphatic block by Martez Jones. Time for Jones, here, Walker. he's gonna say, and he, Jones leads the team in blocks with nine on the season. 11.38, media time out here inside. Chappie James will step out for a break as well on the Golden Tigers Sports Network. As a global bank, our game plan is to help clients manage their money. We're a team of challengers, thinkers, and go-getters. Together, we bring out the best in each other. With our partner, SIAC, we're creating pathways for the next generation of talent. We're scouting bankers, advisors, techies, and yes, athletes. Kick off your career with UBS. And as we take a look inside the Golden Tigers huddle, I'd like to go ahead and issue this public apology to my broadcast partner, uh, Charles Ward. 
We could be here all day with that. <laughs> I incorrectly identified as the Ghetto Boys. Is I was right on the mind playing tricks on me, but wrong on the I Got Five on it. That was actually performed by the Loonies, but in a certain way that kind of fits me being both loud and wrong. So you can't be, you can be one or the other. You can't be both. You can't yeah. be loud and wrong. Yeah. So for that, my broadcast partner, I apologize to you. Well, <laughs> kind we'll, of. We'll make you a little loony. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, okay. we can't forget it's still me. Do you still want to be right, factually correct, right? Sure. And if you Absolutely. put on misinformation, you want to double back right. and, and correct back. that thing. I give it to you. You're right. You get the award. Spinner on the attempt to dunk by Thomas is good with the lay in. <laughs> Thomas giving it to him. Thomas first. is the first time he's on the board. And they go in that full court pressure. Tuskegee having a difficult time getting across. Now they go down at the block. Jones got to lay in and a foul. Good Charles, key pass from Oscar Taylor that trip down the floor. And Charles, that's what I was talking about, trying to advance the basketball up to Martez Jones against Sean Page, who's got that assignment. And for him, you want to get him leaning. You want to get him following you so that you can get him out of the game. Now, they have on the board number 34. I don't see a number 34 on the floor. I think they mean 35. In yeah, they just changed. Correct it? Okay. Yeah, see that? First personal on him. People listen to you, Walker. I don't know about that. Back the other way, three-point bomb down in the corner. That was knocked down by Wayne Jefferson, the senior. Boy, that's a three-pointer to make it 19-10. Watson back the other way, up, up top to Pennington. Shuttle pass at the block, Jones. One on one against Page. Jones hook shot right side, left it short. Slap the basketball, trying to keep it alive, but it will go over to Central State. Uh, are we calling him Ariel Gazelle? Is yes, absolutely, okay. absolutely. We're going with that. I saw at that time down the floor. I know exactly what he does now. He'll shoot it, and as soon as his feet, feet hit the floor, he just goes right back up. Yeah, just like a yeah. springboard. Great analysis. So quick on about that. it, then. That, yeah. that allows him to get that second chance opportunity a number of times in a ball game. That's why the guy's averaging double digit rebounds so far this season 10.7. Jumper in the corner. That one's knocked down in the corner by Xavier Jackson. So they're hitting it from all parts of the floor with different people. Jackson with a three pointer. 22 10. Tuskegee just trying to weather this early storm of shooting by Central State. Bounce the blocks that tried to make it left side. Did Watson, he missed, but Cambridge back to the inside. Got a lay in. Got a good follow up there by Dillon. Cambridge, one of the better rebounders for this Tuskegee squad. That's his 23rd offensive rebound of the season. That's second on the team. Third on the team for correction. 9.43 left, first half of play. Down at the block. This time it's Thomas has got a step and a whistle. Jones late to catch up on that play. Uh-oh. Now, now, okay, now they're going back and forth. Sean Page is running off to the Marauders bench. Both he and Martellus Jones got into a, let's say, a verbal disagreement. So uh, we need to watch that matchup as the game proceeds. Jones with his second personal takes the seat. Free throw attempt by Thomas is off the mark. Martez with the early two personals coming back to the bench, kind of dejected there. Rayvon Thomas, Charles from the D. Rattle that was good. Where's the real D? Is the real D? Is it is it Dallas or is it Detroit? Oh boy. <laughs> Which one's the real D? Because Rayvon Thomas, he's from Detroit. Last I checked. Detroit won their playoff game, did they not? They did. I'd halfway be thinking you'd say Davenport, Iowa, someplace. <laughs> oh, Detroit, Michigan, it says right here. Summit yeah. Academy, North. Yeah. Cambridge. Jumper out front, he got it. Got the three-pointer by Cambridge. He scored the last five points for the Golden Tigers, 23-15 now. Yeah, almost downtown Detroit on that shot by Cambridge. Half court set for the Marauders now. They lead it 23-15. Almost 
Nine minutes remaining in this basketball, first half of basketball play. Out front, another three-point shot. This one on the front of the iron by Jefferson. They'll run it down in the corner, but Taylor took it away. Three-on-one basketball. Bucks pass left side, Teddington to the rack. Left hand to play in. About oh. as high as you can go off of the cylinder and got it to fall. Man, that was a beautiful left-handed lay. And give Austin Taylor credit for anticipating that steal to initiate that break. Tuskegee cutting into that Marauders lead. 840 remaining in the first half. Tuskegee with a 23-17 lead. As we take a look at some action coming to us from down South Georgia way, the Golden Rams of Albany State and the Tigers of Savannah State engaged in the basketball game. Understand that Savannah's got an early lead in that SIAC contest. Charles, once again, SIAC play. Can't count anybody out. Can't take anybody for granted. As you look at that huddle, Antonio Davis' squad, despite their 2 and 14 record, you got to play. And right now, his squad leads it by six. Yeah, we referenced the fact that they lost their last ball game against the Badgers, a tough Spring Hill team. The Badgers were able to get a three pointer right before the buzzer to win that ball game. But Central State, from what we've seen them carry over from that contest to now, Leaves you kind of wondering how in the world can this team be 2 and 14? Up front, this is Black with the basketball, the junior from Indianapolis. Page on a weave, gives it over to Stephen Key. Key back out front, quick push of the basketball. Jackson tried to get it airborne, couldn't do so. Foul line extended now. This is Thomas. Now before the buzzer, they got it airborne, and it's an air ball. So the violation gives it over to Tuskegee. And that brings a big roar from Coach Taylor at the sideline. They were on a run before that timeout, and it continues with that defensive stop. Half court set Culpepper now. Gives it up to Watson. Julian, left side, lost the dribble. Pennington pops out for the basketball. DeAnthony, hard push right side to the glass, banked it. It won't stay down, but DeAnthony, the junior, had it to the free throw line. Pennington, going to a place he's very familiar at the line. 90% free throw shooting for DeAnthony, 27 of 30. Coming into the ball game, media timeout here inside of Chappie James. 7.51 remains, pinning to the shoot after we return. Hey, future business leader. Launch your success story at one of the nation's premier HBCUs. Learn cutting-edge practices and feed your entrepreneurial spirit. Tuskegee University. We get the business of business education. 7.51 remains in first half of play. Here's the digital displays of the proud sponsor of Golden Tigers basketball on the Golden Tigers Sports Network. As we exclusive provider digital scores table here inside Chappie James and the new state-of-the-art Drumbo Fund at Cleveland Abbott Stadium. Booster Digital Displays is committed to boosting Tuskegee Athletics to the next level. For more information on their affordable and innovative booster product line, you can visit them at www.boosterdisplays.com. Seven fifty-one left, first half at the line. Pennington to shoot. Twenty-three seventeen. Tuskegee trailing it. Anthony. It's the first free throw. You see Dwayne Anthony at the line. You take a look at that right hand. He's got that protective gear on it, but not impacting his ability to shoot the basketball. Got both of the free throws from the line. He's got six in his first half of play. Charles, he has to be amongst the league leaders in free throw percentage. He is right now, like you said, over 90%. We talked about this last time through is that sometimes it's an issue of how many trips to the line you've had to see if you qualify for it. Mm -hmm. And with just 30, I don't think he met that threshold yet. He had 30 attempts coming into today's ball game. 
because if you look at that, Kasami Draper, they have him listed as 25th leading free throw shooter in the conference, and Draper only shooting at 57% from the free throw line, but he's shot 121 shots from the line, so I know it has something to do with the number of shots you've taken. So well, Charles, that's is certainly strong. <laughs> I mean, that just surprises me because it would seem that 30 attempts with 15 games, two attempts a game, that, that would seem like it would be enough to qualify. I hear you. No argument from me. Seven to shoot. Draper to the glass. Banked it. Cole Pepper trying to come in there and get a steal a rebound, but it, Black took it away. Down low, they got it to Page at the block. Page working down low. Got a whistle Ooh. and a basket. Ooh, now, now that extra shove there by Page was unnecessary. And if Cole, if Cole Pepper had reacted differently, he might have gotten a call because uh, Page is a little over aggressive there, Charles. I agree with you. That was some contact after he made the uh, lay in right side. He's excited about it, obviously. Taking a tighter look there. Tighter look at DeAnthony Pennington, that right hand. As uh, he's got it heavily, it's not bandaged, it's just wrapped well to try to soften any contact that he incurs with it. Has a split right there between the two fingers on the inside and uh, re injured that. But still playing through it. Draper with a jumper outside, missed on the shot, left bank. Charles, I was, left. I was amazed by his performance last time out against Kentucky State. Uh, he was quite impressive, Charles. Yeah, finished with 19 in that ball game. Jackson, back of the iron on that one. The long rebound to Draper. Tuskegee trailing by eight with 6-10 remaining first half of play. Charles, I don't want to put the, put the whammy on anybody, but I've been thoroughly impressed of how Tuskegee is taking care of the basketball in this first half of play overall. Cambridge with it now, works it left block. Dillon got the defense up, floater, left it short. The mystifying part is that they're down by eight. Sure, sure. That's what they're going to be happy about if they go into this locker room with just a single digit uh, deficit. They were trailing by at least double digits early in this first half of play. Starting to settle in a little bit more as this ball game continues to unfold. Jumper in the corner, that one's off the mark. Nothing but white jerseys inside the paint. That's exactly what you want to see. Watson, hard push right side. Julian, DeAnthony, left side. Got it to the glass, banked Ooh. it, and rushed it just a little bit. He got the step on the defense, though. Just could not finish it. Out front with the basketball is black. We are at five minutes remaining first half. Charles, the Marauders come in averaging 74 points per game. Right now they only have 27. And again, I want to echo how, how well Tuskegee overall has played this season on the defensive side of the floor. Oftentimes and not, they limit teams to their scoring below their scoring averages. Talk about defense. That trip down the floor, we saw it. Jackson had a little bit of space, but they closed it so quickly, he missed on an easy lay-in. Watson over to Cambridge, jumper. That one looks hard, and it is hard. Page runs it down at the base. And we run down the 415 left. The junior Black handles out front. Tuskegee would love to get a stop here. This trip down the floor for the Marauders. They push a three-pointer out front. That one's off the mark. Jackson took it. Xavier Jackson. There's a Xavier out there and a Willie. Pennington, 348 left. First half of play. Slide pass. Draper. Draper squares. Jumper. Back of the iron. Rebound this time, nothing but black jerseys in this pink to get the basketball. Watch Willie Jackson on this sequence right here. They're going to try to get him off playing against Watson. This is Xavier Jackson with the basketball. Foul on extended now. Key spinners off the mark. Basketball tapped around there. Get Cambridge for coming in there. And a foul on Page. Got to tell you, 
Steven, or sorry, Sean Page is playing with a lot of uh, intensity, shall we say. I, I wouldn't be surprised, like I said, if he doesn't control his, his, his actions, or more importantly, his reactions, there might be some foul play there. 3.16 left first half, timeout inside the arena. 27-19, Tuskegee trails. Back with more on the Golden Tiger Sports Network. Hi, I am Deborah Rogers, Deputy Chief Athletic Director, Tuskegee University, and you're watching the Golden Tiger Sports Network. Tuskegee Nation, I am Gerald Long, General Manager of the Utilities Board of Tuskegee, and this is the Golden Tiger Sports Network. Hey, future business leader, launch your success story at one of the nation's premier HBCUs. Learn cutting edge practices and feed your entrepreneurial spirit. Tuskegee University, we get the business of business education. Got a little bit of everything going on here inside Chappie James. Some dancers there on the far side of the floor on MLK Day here. Glad you're spending part of your holiday with us. Charles, Three, those look like remains. some, I think those were sorrows, Charles. You call, refer to them as dancers? I believe they were. Well, they were sorrows, sorrows that were dancing, right? <laughs> yeah, sorrows that were dancing. Yeah, I'll buy that. I think they were AKAs, if I'm not mistaken. Inside of Chappie James had uh, Delters from the Sorority Founders Day. And we're here on Saturday, on Monday on the holiday. It's the AKAs who show first at the line for the Marauders. Free throw by Stephen Key. He converts on the first. Founders Day today for the AKAs. So congratulations to that organization. Yeah, we didn't talk very much about it when it was Founders Day for the Deltas, so we'll get them collectively here. Just really just want to thank both those organizations for such a historic impact as it relates to social issues that they have tackled and a variety of issues that just makes life better for so many different people. Mickens, Spinner, left side to the glass, and he faked it home. And Mickens with his first field goal in the ball game. Two forty left, first half. Tuskegee trailing it by eight. On the turn, hit hard in the face there was Keys as he bounced it inside underneath the defense, a whistle there. Christopher Whitmore, the freshman, providing the defense down low, and they'll get him for the foul, and that'll send Willie Jackson to the line for the Marauders. Jackson, first aerial is good from the line. Whitmore takes a seat after the foul. And then Bryce Cummings, the sophomore from Tallahassee, out on the floor now. The walk on. Jackson, two of two from the line. with an even 10 in this ball game now. Watson across the timeline handling the basketball for Tuskegee. Lead back to 10 for Central State. Evan Howell out on the floor. They're trying to work off of a screen by Howell. Watson does tend to shoot. Bounce pass at the block to Evan. And Evan lost his shoe inside the paint. They call a foul on the inside. Thomas picks up his second for Central State. Team foul number four. 208 remains first half. The Anthony to inbound it. Pushes it in the corner to Mickens. Chris got some space with the line drop jumper and knocked it down. Mickens quick on the draw for his fourth point of this ball game. And, and consecutive trips down the floor with a bucket. 
Victims, the freshman from Clemens, North Carolina. 149 left first half. 31-23 lead for Central State. Tuskegee would love to get a stop here. Black cross dribble by him. Now pushes across the floor. They go back to Black. Now it's Key with the jumper. And Key is fouled on the wow. three-point shot. Three, three freebies. Can, yeah. It's not the one you want to give up there. It's Pennington. Picks up that foul. You just take your chances on that three there. You work them in terms of the clock to run mm -hmm. it down. But you don't want to bail them out with that foul. Pennington trying to explain to the referee what had happened was. Stephen Key says, I'll tell you what happening from the run is he got the first of three. So Pennington with that foul, that was his first. He'll take a seat. with two more coming. I guess they rule he was only in, it wasn't a three-pointer walker, so he got the two free throws there. Mm. That's it then. So a minute 23 left. The lead back to 10. Tuskegee trying to cut the de deficit on this end of the floor. Whitmore back out for Tuskegee. In the corner to Cummings. Back to Whitmore. Three-pointer by Whitmore. Front of the iron. Rebound, Mickens. Mickens challenges on the inside. Key trying to answer defensively, but he commits the foul. So Key picks up his first. And Chris Mickens to the line for the Golden Tigers. Mickens, 19 of 24 from the charity stripe coming into today's ball game. That's 79% free throw shooting for the freshman. And Charles, his shooting really overall has come on strong since a slow start to his collegiate career. Knocks down that first free throw. Yeah, you talk about the youth of this team and the way it looks going forward. You certainly see Chris Mickens as a big part of the development of the Golden Tigers basketball program. Mickens got them both from the line. So Chris with six, with 66 seconds remaining. 33-25, Central State leading. Half court trap by Tuskegee. Black with the basketball down. Under a minute remaining, 15 for them to shoot. He'll work off of a screen by Page. Trying to do a little give and go there. Page couldn't make the turn quick enough. Now four for them to shoot. They got a hurry. Jumper, line drive is off the mark. Draper clears for Tuskegee. 35 seconds left, first half. Whitmore out front over to Watson. Tuskegee would love to end this first 20 minutes with a basket here. 24 seconds left. About a three-second differential. About 15 now on the shot clock. Julian, hard push right side. Now nine to shoot. Raises, fires. Got it for Tuskegee. How about Watson from out front? Watson, since getting an opportunity, he's been very good at creating his own shot, creating space and knocking down the bucket. Jackson with a floater just before the buzzer to get some of it back for the Marauders of Central State. They didn't want to foul him. They gave him a crease to the cylinder, floated it from about three, four feet away to knock it down. 35-27 Central State with the lead, but an impressive performance by the Golden Tigers in the latter part of that first half to take this into a locker room trailing by just a single-digit margin. Take a look at what's going on in Buffalo, New York. So what a crowd <laughs> kind of dissipated here. Probably hey. going home outside of the cold. Listen, man, first quarter action, no score between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Buffalo Bills. You know, I'll have one of my eyes uh, trained on that one, if I'm being just transparent. <laughs> All right, Charles. Coming up at half, guess what? We're going to have a very special guest. Jasmine. Oh, I want Jasmine to down there. Yeah, yeah Manuel. Jasmine yeah. Manuel. Yeah. Yeah. Coming up next, right? On the Golden Tigers Sports Network. Yeah. Take a break here. Tuskegee University's founder, 
Booker T. Washington said, excellence is to do a common thing in an uncommon way. At many universities, big classes are common, not at Tuskegee. We have small classes with a 14 to one average student to teacher ratio. This formula for excellence ensures individualized attention. You get to know your professors and they get to know you. Know you well enough to recommend you for internships, research, graduate programs, and job opportunities. Small classes, big impact. It's all part of educational excellence at Tuskegee University. For all the ways you love to play, Academy Sports and Outdoors makes it easier than ever to get what you need and have fun out there. Get free shipping on your favorite brands at academy.com or get free curbside or in-store pickup at your Academy store. Hey Tuskegee fans, this basketball season, shop the latest clothing, gifts, and of course, basketball merch from your one and only Tuskegee University Bookstore. Visit us in-store or online at tuskegeeuniversityshop.com. See you soon. Tuskegee didn't start off as a big campus. It started off in a small shack in the back of a church. The focus was always to build the community up. We share in a culture together that um, is kind of hard to explain. You gotta live it, you gotta enjoy it. It's the HBCU experience. It's nothing short than, than beautiful. So my name is Dia Hunter. I am an assistant professor of construction management here at Tuskegee. The students make the institution special. You're gonna deal with students that are brilliant, students who have a mind for construction. They bring diverse backgrounds, diverse ways of life. I love sharing this with students. I love giving them the tools that they need in order to be great at it. Just because we're at HBCU doesn't mean our education is, is different. Don't get me wrong, we have different values and traditions and culture and things like that. So we're gonna have different outlooks, different understandings on things, and that makes for a better company is diverse minds. I am Kaylin Parm, a graduating senior construction science and management major, hailing from the Rocket City, Huntsville, Alabama. And to be a part of Tuskegee University's construction science and management program is to be a part of history. In, in this field, I'm, I'm underrepresented. I'm a black woman, so obviously it's not gonna be a lot of people like me, and that's okay, because we're still working for diversity, but the part that I would like to see more is the inclusion part. So yes, you have a black girl here and an Asian guy there, but do they feel comfortable in this environment? Do they feel like they're actually a part of the team? Let's start with HBCUs, and coming here and getting to know our students and our programs, you'll see that not only are we coming with the knowledge that you need us to have, but we also have some different perspectives you might not have. We have to give back. Everybody counts or nobody counts. And that's gotta be part of leadership. By Procore taking the lead on this scholarship program and partnering with AGC as a Grand Slam home run. Well, I'm Bob Bowen, chairman and founder of Bowen Engineering. We can make a real difference in our industry, in our community, in our society. We're a better place to go than Tuskegee or the, or the other HBCUs. The Living the Veil of Ignorance statue represents Booker T. Washington telling all the slaves what they can be in the world. Today, I think the Living the Veil statue represents what we are showing the world. Hey, we got great students that can produce great work in all disciplines. HBCUs 
produce top students. My name is Dr. Shauna L. Rogers. I'm a associate professor at Tuskegee University. Right now, diversity is what we need in this country. Specifically construction, we're running out of workers. The more that we are open to diversity, the more we're open to giving these students chances, get to make everything better. Hey, we're here. It's 11 HBCUs that offer construction science, construction management. All 11 have great students. All 11 are well prepared. You just gotta give them a chance. And we're back live inside Chappie James at intermission of the men's basketball game. Tuskegee trailing at 35-27 to the Marauders of Central State. But the Golden Tigers on the women's side have taken care of business already here this afternoon at Chappie James with a 79-55 win over the Lady Marauders of Central State. We're joined now at halftime by Ciante Wester, head coach of the Golden Tigers. Coach, congratulations on the win this afternoon. Thank you. Let's talk a little bit about that win. We talked about it in the pregame that it was going to be important for your team to come out with an early start, and that they did. Yes, um, we got off to a good start and um, rebound the ball well, so that was our biggest thing, keeping them off the board and be aggressive on the board. So, so we out-rebounded them and got some clean shots and was able to run some good sets, so I think um, that carried the momentum throughout the game. Once you got that early lead, you seemed to settle into it, had a lot of different players in and out of that lineup, all of them performing well. What was an early key to you that led you to believe that things were working the way that you wanted? You came in saying, we did not want to lose two ball games in a row, and it showed this afternoon. It, it was the, the key was the energy, how we practiced, how our shoot around went this morning, and also how we came out um, pregame. Um, shooting, shooting the ball well, so that was, that was key, and we just carried that momentum over to the game. We talked about it in pregame as well that it was critical to win this one because now you get ready to face a couple of ball games on the road, starting Memphis on next Saturday, then over to Jackson. Got that momentum out of the win this afternoon. How does that carry over or translate into a full week of practice before you hit the road? Yes, high energy, high energy, uh, uh, minds, heads lifted, everything. You Nobody want to take a long trip with a loss. <laughs> so uh, it, it was very important. So we, we did preach that. And, you know, you feel good about it and going on the road. It, it give you a little more energy to do better and to work harder. But we don't want the long faces. So we knew we had to come out here and perform well. Well, one of the reasons you didn't have a long face this afternoon is because you have to give that impact belt to the player that was the most impactful in today's ball game. We're here now at, the, at post game of the contest. Let's introduce our impact player of the game. Our impact player of the game. <laughs> Impact player of the game is Jasmine Manuel. Jasmine, congratulations on the win this afternoon. Thank you. You get the belt. Raise the belt. Let them see it. All right. <laughs> you just came out on fire this afternoon, started out hitting your first couple of baskets on the inside. What did it feel like for you to get that early rhythm in this win over the Marauders? It felt really good. I think it was really important for us just to like start off strong. And it just felt good to have my own confidence as well as my own teammates' confidence boosted up going out there. Yeah, you had 17 points, 10 rebounds, your first double-double of the season. Mm -hmm. Things just seemed to be so easy for you in the ball game this afternoon. Was it? Or did you have to really, really work hard to create those spots and shots for you on the floor? I think I did have to work to an extent just to be able to get the shots and get the open looks for myself and for my teammates. Nothing was like really easy or really given to us. In this ball game, you, you rebound from that loss against the Thoroughbreds of Kentucky State just a couple of days ago. How important was it for the team to get a win this size headed into what will be the travel part of the season now? I mean, it was really important for us just to, in order for us to get our confidence back and just bounce back from that, be able to move past it and just look at it like the pass is in the past and be able to move forward, especially going on the road, going into that with the win and having the confidence to know what we can do and be able to execute that. We were talking about it with Coach Wester that you had four ball games in a row here at home at Chappie. Yes. You went three out of four in terms of wins here. That will be some momentum for the team as well going yes, out. Yes, it would. Talk about some of the other players that impacted the ball game. You got the belt because you had the 17 points and 10 rebounds, but you had a lot of help from your colleagues on the floor this afternoon. Oh, yes, I definitely did, 100%. Like Brittany Bolin and Amy, 
or air on the couch. All we know where it's at, Mac. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> all of them being able to like get the ball inside and actually looking for me, especially Trinity too, being able to like look for me and know when to pass it. Like just making sure that they're like helping me get in a good position and passing at a good time, or me getting in position to help them get their open shots too. That so was all of them played a great role in me. Sure, yeah. great team effort this afternoon. Yeah. You win at 79-55, yeah. and you get the belt. Hold that belt <laughs> up again, Jasmine. Our impact player of the women's contest at Tuskegee. Thank you, Jasmine. Thank you. Jasmine Manuel <laughs> joining us here at halftime of the men's contest. More basketball is just ahead on the Golden Tigers Sports Network. Hey, Tuskegee fans. This basketball season, shop the latest clothing, gifts, and, of course, basketball merch from your one and only Tuskegee University bookstore. Visit us in-store or online at tuskegeeuniversityshop.com. See you soon. Charles, where can you get this? Where, where, I, for real, where can you get this experience, this HBCU experience? Tuskegee said. University is leading the charge. Indeed. HBCUs, there are HBCUs, and there are other schools that are even top of that. Tuskegee, one of the most historic. Yes, sir. Charles, how about this? Look at these two sterling stats that we harp on all the time. Tuskegee. Yeah. 86% from the free throw line, and get this, three turnovers in the first half. Gotta love, love it. love that, no doubt. Yeah, the numbers we've been talking about all season long have just been so diametrically opposed to that, what we're seeing here. Have to be encouraged by that. Yeah. 
35-27, Tuskegee trails it though as we get set for second half action. Taylor out front, almost got it taken away from him there. Draper inside the paint, Kasami back to Pennington. DeAnthony hard push right side and a whistle. Call down right. DeMar Moore, the freshman for Central State. And Charles, let me go ahead and give you some first-time stats as far as statistical leaders. Leading all scores is Willie Jackson with 12 points for the Marauders. For Tuskegee, a pair of players with six points apiece. DeAnthony Pennington with six, as well as Chris Mickens. Draper runs down an errant shot by Pennington to save it to Oston. Taylor back to Draper, left side. Draper hard push inside the paint, had a tap from behind. And a whistle called inside. They call that one on Thomas, and that's Thomas's third D as we start the second half of play. All right, Charles, we're getting ready to talk about our story within the story, which will be that foul, and there goes a third foul. So we talk about gaining the advantage any kind of way you can. Now this from the free throw line, should the bonus come into play here with 19.25 to play in the second half. Call that one on Page, and Page picks up this second. Martez Jones to the line for Tuskegee. Jones sinks that first free throw. He was one of one in the first half. Now make it two of two on the game. 35-28. Martez for the second. Got that one as well. Charles Ward, Dwayne Walker with the play call. Glad you could join us on the Golden Tigers Sports Network. Happy MLK Day to you. Glad you're spending some of it with us. At the block, whistles there as Key trying to get some positioning on the inside. Mickens trying to catch up. Mickens picks up his second. Now again, Charles, we talked about stories within the story. It's, it's important that the Tuskegee Golden Tigers play aggressive but under control. No silly fouls. Inside the paint, Reed with a runner right side. He missed on the shot. Martez Jones clears the rebound for Tuskegee. Jones only had two rebounds in that first half off his 10.7 average. See if we'll pick it up here in the second half. Taylor out front trying to get it to Jones. Down at the block. Back out to Oston. Oston left side. Tried to slide it down at the block. Got it there to Draper. Kasami hard push inside. Spinner is good. Whistle behind it. Yes, sir. Kasami Draper, first field goal in the game. He now has three points with a chance to cap off a three-point play. And more importantly, fourth team foul already with less than a minute and a half gone by in this second half. Damar Moore picks up that personal. That's his second here and early in this second half of play. Jones, dangerous try there. Could have been over the back of the call. The whistle didn't blow. Got to be a little more careful than that one. No way to get that rebound. Key handles half court set to Page. Draper has that defensive assignment. Play strong defense without fouling here. Backdoor cut, cut off there by Pennington as he got a hand in that passing lane. Yeah, Page with a desperate attempt at a bounce pass there. They'll keep it. Seven seconds remains on that shot clock. Sean Black out on the floor now. He will inbound the basketball for Coach Davis and Central State with 18.25 left in the ball game. Pushes out front to Reed. Reed quickly over now to Key. Key right side. Draper following. Key took a big splash on the ground. He's lying there right now, and we'll get the, the trainers to come take a look at him. Take a look at that replay. Yeah, no footing but under him at all there. Well, it, it looked like in going up, Charles, he, let's see here. Charles, it seems like he was already off balance before he got clipped by Draper, who's trying to come over for the block. Yeah, I agree with that. I'm not sure if they were... Uh, uh, that was part of the contact that uh, sent him down to the floor, or just like you said, he was already off balance there coming in for that play. But he had no real protection as he was going down hard under the basket. And he will draw attention not only from his training staff, but the training staff here at Tuskegee. Let's take a break here in the action. 18-19 left in this basketball game. Tuskegee trailing at 35-31. And you're watching the Golden Tiger Sports Network.
This is Benji Taylor, head basketball coach for Tuskegee University, and you are watching the Golden Tiger Sports Network. Hey, Tuskegee fans. This basketball season, shop the latest clothing, gifts, and, of course, basketball merch from your one and only Tuskegee University bookstore. Visit us in-store or online at tuskegeeuniversityshop.com. See you soon. Hi, I'm Nicholas Brown, Academic Advisor, Operation Manager, and you're watching the Golden Tiger Sports Network. Walker, you were talking about things that you only see at an HBCU. This is another classic example of it. Coach Benchy Taylor, the head coach of the Golden Tigers of Tuskegee, just as concerned about Stephen Key as you see Antonio Davis. Davis, the head coach of the Marauders there, huddled down low for Key as well as he comes up limping, but at least under his own power to come off the basketball court. Charles, really he good. Charles, he took a big spill there. Wouldn't be surprised if he's in concussion protocol because he literally landed on the back of his head. Tough shot down at the bottom of the end zone. Uh, bottom of the end zone. Sorry. <laughs> it'll, it'll lead you right there. Let's take another look at it here. Watch his head there, Charles. You can't really see it, fortunately, but trust me, he took sure. a spill on his head first. Yeah, there was no way any other body part would have gotten to the floor faster. is talking but when you start talking about that uh, now he's trying concern. to stay in but the referee's like nah sure. nah son nah nah of course the officials they're going to have to err on the side of caution Absolutely. as you get a look at uh, Byron Evans Errol Lewis and Torin Davis they're going to make the right decision to protect the ball player and uh, that's the right thing to do. Yeah, interesting that this, this is unfolding, that we're talking about concussion protocols and uh, the impact it's having on different levels as you have a football game going here in the background, and we're doing a basketball game here. Oh, that's okay. You can, you're multitasking, no hey, problem. Hey, but man, this wait, wait, hold on a second, man. You ain't have to call me out like no, that, Charles. Okay. I gave a pre. I, I told folks earlier that, admittedly, I have one eye somewhere else. There you go. Jeez. So let's oh, I can't repeat it, right? You, all right, Charles, go ahead. The, me point, the, the point being, though, seriously, in all yeah, seriousness, all right, all right. you know I teach a play-by-play -play announcing class at Morehouse College in addition yes. to sports reporting. Yes. And we actually have a group that's coming on the campus in February that's going to be talking about concussions from the standpoint of athletes getting them, but also from people in the reporting industry about how you talk about concussions during the course of a ball game. Right. Just as we've done here with Sean Key down in this basket. Not making any kind of medical predictions, but right. talking about the fact that he hit his head, there's a protocol in place when that happens, and not making any guesses about what happened to this player from a medical perspective, but bringing it live to attention and as honest a conversation as you can have. We're looking forward to having that as a part of uh, our students and anybody that's in that area could really come in and participate in that workshop. And Charles, oftentimes a player is going to, with a warrior mentality, is going to sure. want to stay in the game and compete. However, you have to look out for the player's best interest when he can't look out for his own best interest at the time. And an interesting thing in the last 10, 15 years that has become the posture that organizations will let a player make that decision about playing. And now it's just gone full tilt about we're all on board about doing the thing that's most protective. That's a great point. Inside, line drive on the short shot inside, got his own rebound there on the missed opportunity. 17:35 remaining in the basketball game. Pennington rainbow finds yes. the bottom. Well, when Pennington shoots that basketball, man, it reminds me of Byron, or not Byron Scott, but Charlie, Charlie. Scott from back sure. in the day yeah, from the Boston Celtics. Yes, sir. You that under my oh, wait a minute. Wait, 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 I, forgot, I, forgot, <laughs> I forgot who I was talking to. I was trying to say it underneath my breath, but with you, I probably need to say it with my chest. That's I say it under my breath. You'd say it with your chest. Be Celtics. <laughs> Page underneath and got hit with a jump ball call. Good defensive work down there. It'll stay with Central State for a great defensive effort down low. Yes, Charles, and more importantly, we had a double-digit lead for the Marauders. Now the Golden Tigers have cut it to just two points. We talk about it all the time, Walker, about each trip being so important down the floor. They dump it right back inside the page. Pushes across the floor, three-pointer in the corner by Jackson, hit the side of the backboard, that's a violation. Basketball over to Tuskegee. 
I've been really impressed how both teams have taken care of the basketball in the first uh, 23 minutes of this contest. Nice to see. Boy. Golden Tigers are able to pull this basketball game out. We're going to have a lot of fun with Coach Taylor about those three turnovers in that first half. Probably should have taken a screenshot of that one. <laughs> Mm. Bounce pass in traffic and they throw it away. Three on two basketball for Central State. Now Jackson fires, finds the bottom for Central State. I blame you on that, Charles. You yeah, talked it up. You it. talked it up. <laughs> Should have yeah. just left it alone. Sure did. <laughs> Walked right into it. Half court set, Tuskegee trailing by four. Jones out front, right side to Culpepper. Chips trying to go at the block Draper. He's there, squares on Reed. Kasami, hard push right side to the glass. It won't stay down, but the sophomore is headed to the free throw line. 15 foul. Foul went to numero five, Antoine Reed Jr. Just the first personal foul on him, but one, two, three, four, five team fouls. So the Golden Tigers are two away from the bonus with 16.20 to play in regulation. Boy, you like to hear that. That's so much time remaining in the basketball game. That can certainly help you down the stretch. But they've got to continue doing what they did in the first half, convert from the free throw line. And identify that in this second half of play where the Marauders only committed four fouls compared to uh, Tuskegee's nine, it's kind of flip-flop now. So you got to play the free throw game, the foul game here smartly. Draper for the second with one of two from the line. Draper two of four on the afternoon from the charity strike. Lead is three for the Marauders. Black with the basketball out front. Taylor with that defensive assignment for Tuskegee. Bounce pass almost taken away by Pennington near the mid strike. Jackson with 10 to shoot. Hard push by him. Down at the block, they got a man floating on the inside, and Thomas finishes with the flush. Thomas showed his athleticism, cutting to the basket baseline and flushing that one home. That's what a guy like Willie Jackson could do. He played that basketball with dribbling it on the inside. They paid so much attention to him, and Thomas was able to get an easy one. Draper, hard push at the block. That won't be an easy one for him. He missed on the shot, but Kasame right back to that free throw line with some tough work at the baseline. Rayvon Thomas, fourth personal foul on him. Six team foul, Charles. Six team fouls. Next one, we're shooting, we're shooting free throws the rest of the half unless it's a player control foul. I like that. 15-37 remains in it, which means we're at a media time out here. 40-35, Central State leads it. Back with more basketball after this time out on the Golden Tigers Sports Network. Hi, I'm Jordan Benson, the Sports Information Director at Tuskegee University, and you're watching the Golden Tiger Sports Network. Hey, future business leader. Launch your success story at one of the nation's premier HBCUs. Learn cutting-edge practices and feed your entrepreneurial spirit. Tuskegee University. We get the business of business education. Broadcast coverage of Tuskegee University basketball on the Golden Tiger Sports Network is brought to you by TNT Fireworks, America's best-selling brand of and the largest distributor of consumer fireworks. TNT Fireworks, I know you had a lot of that kind of activity going on at your house, Walker, during the holiday season, ringing in the new year, fireworks, and yeah, celebrating the turn of 2024. I got to tell you something, Charles, 2023 went by super swiftly i mean it, it it went by pretty quick and already the month of uh <laughs> january <laughs> half older over charles i know we talked about this being martin luther king jr holiday uh trying to find the tie-in now i'm trying to just you know for confirmation i read somewhere through the st louis dispatch that martin luther king did the commencement speech back here in 1965 and i'm going to try to confirm that Trying to see if I can confirm that. Okay. Let's see if some of our fans that are listening can confirm that as well. We had our camera off, Cassandra, right to my left, trying to verify it of his appearance here on the campus. Didn't get a chance to check back with him, with her, with the action or what she found out. 
And it's Tuskegee on the action down low. They're going to take away on a missed shot inside. In the corner, Cole Pepper three for Cole Pepper. Missed on the shot, but Jones backside rebound. Another look there for Tuskegee. A three will tie it. Jones to the rack. He's fouled. He'll be shooting from the line. Gotta love it, Charles. Recognizing the situation, recognizing that the team is in the bonus, recognizing that you can go to the free throw line to get some free buckets. And for Paige, Charles, foul number three for him. Taz Martez at the line to shoot. Test. Missed on that first. No, he made that, Charles. Charles, he made oh, that. Did, did he make it? Yeah, you're right. They got the score on the board there. Thank you for that correction. But Jones, good work from the free throw line continues. Got them both. Since All right. Confirmation here, Walker, on our question about Dr. King, also says that he was here in the 1957. Tuskegee, Speaking. right at the with the Civic folks. Yeah, but, uh, some organization, the TCA. So, mm -hmm. if he was there as commencement commencement speaker, we at least have him here reported at Tuskegee at least a couple of times. See, I yeah. I have I have a story from December 31st of 2020 says that. May 31st of 1965 from the dispatch. And I'm trying to have it go through. It hasn't completely gone through to me to try to confirm it. They did commencement in May 31st. And so that first appearance was in the 50s. So at least two appearances here at Tuskegee. We'll continue to effort that. Find out the exact information for you. Sure. Meanwhile, on the floor, Marauders got one from the free throw line. Make it 41-39. Tuskegee now with a basket can tie it. Or take a lead with a three-pointer. No, Charles, in 50, 57, that was your senior year in high school, correct? <laughs> Draper, floater, it's good. <laughs> And you graduated oh, early. Oh, you graduated see. early. Till you were 17 at the time. <laughs> <laughs> Paige, you're gonna get him for the offensive foul down there. Which is a foul by you, Walker. To claim that I'm that aged. <laughs> Fourth power foul in the ball game on Paige. So that's a good sign for Tuskegee. Even better sign as they go back to the other end of the floor to shoot. Chance to claim a lead. And uh, not he, shooting on that one, player control. No, oh, right. player control, right. And he's out of there. Yeah. They'll shoot on all fouls except player control fouls. Pennington thought he was going to try that three. Instead, the Draper. Now down at the block, Jones. And they're going <laughs> to wave that off down low, fighting for a position. And, and Martez winning that battle. They send in Kishon Key, and Key just not strong enough to handle that work down there. <laughs> and, and listen, Charles, and, and all right, all right Charles. Go. Now look at Eric Tabor all on his job. Now we get the split screen with Dr. King speaking at that 1957 event here in Tuskegee. Said it was the TCA. Not sure what that those acronyms mean, but that is him at the podium speaking. I believe it's Tuskegee, Tuskegee Civic Institute. I believe that's what I read. Okay. I may have seen it as TCI. TCI. Yeah. Tuskegee Civic Institute. Maybe an I. But at any rate, there he is on screen. We verify that through this day and age. There's a visual presentation to show you him on the campus. Thank you, Eric, and thanks to all of you who are participating and trying to get us information in regard to that. On MLK Day, recognized across the entire country, but a special meeting here at Tuskegee as well. And Charles, what I noticed that just the rich tradition of both Tuskegee University and Morehouse, where you teach play-by-play -play class, you can just feel the aura, feel the aura of these gentlemen that made such a significant contribution contribution to American society, not only American society, but to the world. Indeed. You talk about it here on Tuskegee campus with Booker T. Washington, George Washington Carver, and so many other people that were impacted as it relates to the history of Tuskegee.
And fortunate enough for me, I get the same thing when I'm teaching at Morehouse. You start talking about Dr. King and his legacy, Benjamin E. Mays, it's the same thing. You just, you just get more grounded recognizing what these people have meant to this country and the world. 13-15 remains in this basketball game. Tuskegee trailing by a point now as Black handles out front. On that last exchange, Charles, the Marauders got a second chance opportunity at the net, and they took the advantage in the first half as well, getting extra shots when the Golden Tigers do not box out. Reed missed on that second opportunity from outside. He had to hurry before the shot clock went off. Missed on the shot. Tuskegee with a chance to claim a lead. Pennington behind the arc. They haven't led since they led 3-0, Charles, early in the contest. Watson got it. Oh, he had a look. I thought he was down, but there's Cambridge. He's got it for the two inside. Cambridge has seven points all. Let me see, five in the first half, two here in the second half. Good-looking shot from Watson out five, but side, but even a better effort on the follow-up there by Dylan Cambridge. Tuskegee by a point now. Jackson goes to work left side and got a spinner. Hee hee, ooh. That was, that was impressive, Charles. Yeah, that's uh, Michael Jackson that's there. <laughs> right side, Pennington behind the arc now. And Anthony looking for some space. He'll slide left side, lost the double. Jumper foul on extended, creased the rim. Basketball over to Central State. Three on three basketball now. Black pushes back out front to Jackson. Doubled immediately. Slips to the floor. They're going to get Pennington for a foul. Mm. All right, Charles. So that's the second foul on Pennington. 15 foul now with two more fouls to give. Now, Charles, you might want to ask, how did the squad trail by eight at halftime? How did the despite squad trail despite by eight at halftime? <laughs> No, listen, despite having only three turnovers, the reason it's only eight-point bulge is because the Marauders only had three first-half turnovers. And the difference in the story was rebounding where the Marauders out-rebounded Tuskegee in that first half. So that's really the, the, the difference. But it's nice to see a relatively clean game by the Golden Tigers taking care of the uh, – taking care of the basketball, and shooting proficiently from the free throw line. And we can see just what this team can be. And I like what I see. Yeah, absolutely. Talk about it with Coach Taylor in the pregame is that if they are able to play an established ball game, meaning minimize turnovers, do an effective job in the free throw shooting, and just continue to play as aggressively as they play day in and day out, then he expected some good results this afternoon. Right now, his troops trailing by just one, 44-43 with 11.46 remaining in the basketball game. Final ball game of a four game set here at Chappie James. Tuskegee, women and men back in action on this coming Saturday, which is the 20th. We'll be live from Memphis, Tennessee on the Golden Tigers network with audio coverage as Tuskegee will meet the magicians of Lamont Owens College that Saturday, and then on Monday coming out of Jackson, Tennessee, with a doubleheader against the Dragons of Lane College. Jackson inside the paint, lost it. Cambridge comes away with it. Up the floor, Culpepper, 2 1 no. Culpepper missed on the flash. Boy. See what it was going after there. Reed mugged underneath. He's fouled. He'll go to the line. Sure, if it was Cole Pepper trying to get back in on that play, it, it, or it, Mickens. It was Charles. Normally, you would talk about how uh, you would talk about how you don't want to compound a mistake. However, in this instance, yes, it would have been incredible if he just simply laid it up for a layup. But I like that he aggressively attacked the rim. He tried to flush it home, wanted to get the people sparked up. I don't find any fault with that other than he did not make the basket. No, not at all. I agree with you. That's a situation down that floor to change the whole paradigm of the game. And on top of that, Charles, he hustled back to the other end. And although he committed a foul, he did not permit uh, uh, the player in uh, Antoine Reed to score the basket. So I'll take that sequence. Cole Pepper picks up his second. And the 
free throws up the line or miss. So and, and he missed both free yep, throws, sure. so that works out. That yeah. works out. Perfect. Watson now across the timeline. Tuskegee can claim a lead again. We head to a minute, 11 minutes left. On the weave, Mickens. Off of a screen by Cambridge. Chris lost his dribble. Cambridge, hard push right side. It's got a lean there. Turned once to the rack. Shot partially deflected at the block by Jackson. Second effort by Cambridge. Missed there. Got it again. Third effort. Got a fourth. Tried this one to the cylinder. And finally, Cambridge will go to the line. Charles, there are chills going through my spine just watching the tenacious effort of Dylan Cambridge. Watch this, ladies and gentlemen. And Eric, if we can just get that entire sequence, look at how pumped up everyone is in the stands and on the bench. Look at the cheerleaders also into it. That was impressive. Yeah, one-man wrecking crew. Cambridge down there, no less than four opportunities in there. Finally rewarded with a coming to the free throw line, and yes. look at that roll. Man, that touched he, almost every part of the cylinder. <laughs> man, he, he he brought me back to Moses Malone. Watch this. First offensive rebound. Goes up, has a block. Second rebound. Goes up, fouled on that play, and almost gets it to go. Yeah, there were two before that, and the second roll is just as favorable as the first. We got them both from the line. Cambridge just a jack in the box down there that time just kept going to the floor and uh, finally got to the free throw line to give Tuskegee its lead 45-44. Jumper out front, basketball to Culpepper. And Tuskegee trying to build on that. Chip will come across the timeline. Skeegee with the lead. He said they haven't had that lead since early, early in this basketball game. Up top, Whitmore on the floor now. On the weave, Chip. Cole Pepper. Left side, foul line extended. Now to Whitmore. Eight to shoot. Draper handles at the block. Kasami, hard push to the glass with the jumper. Missed. Backside a rebound cleared by Central State. Black. Over to Jackson. Xavier misses. Challenging Cole Pepper and Chip commits the foul. All right now, Charles, 9.50 to play. Both teams will be in the bonus, although the Golden Tigers are in the double bonus, which means the Golden Tigers will shoot an automatic two free throws from this point on. One and one situation for the Marauders. They call that foul on Julian Watson instead of Cole Pepper. So that'll be Watson second. And at the line, shooting. Is Xavier Jackson and Xavier Jackson is good with that first free throw for Central State. Do a little residential check here, welfare check. Let's see, Jackson and Jackson. I see one is from Louisville and one for the Indiana from Indiana. So I'm going to surmise they are not related. Watson across the timeline. Tuskegee trailing by a point. Chris lost his dribble, got to get it down at the block. Good move there by Draper. If he'd gone straight inside, he would have gotten a foul and take the basket there. We'll take it. Yep. And and Draper pushed right through to get that foul, but a good headsy play there by Draper to work and get that lay in. Draper's got eight, Charles. Jumper left corner, that one's off the mark. Mickens clears for Tuskegee. Golden Tigers by a point with nine minutes left in the ball game. Watson left side, Tuskegee trying to go back to back winners here inside Chaffee James. Julian up top to Mickens. Chris will have to run it down near the mid stripe. It'll take him under 10 to shoot now. They go to Draper left side, he's doubled there. Step back with the jumper. Draper creased the rim, but that's about it. Xavier Jackson with another rebound for Central State. Here comes Keyes. Glad to see him back out on the floor as they work it down inside. Good defensive work as Jackson shots off the mark. Another opportunity by Central State. That one's off the mark as well. Here comes Cole Pepper again, left side. This time he won't challenge. Oh. Oh. Cole Pepper across the floor. The dangerous pass and an easy giveaway. You saw that wow. coming a mile away, that cross-court pass. It had a long way to go and not enough space in between defenders. 
it is rare you can bounce a pass from the corner, the far side of the floor, all the way out front near the scorer's table. That's got to be a skip pass. Sure. That's got to be just a quarterback fire across the middle or something. You're not going to bounce at that front for sure. And Coach Taylor looked over to Culpepper and said, hey, you got to lift that. You got to get that pass up in the air. So it's a so coaching awesome. opportunity for Coach Benji Taylor as there's a timeout on the floor with 7.57 to play. The Marauders of Central State with a narrow 48-47 lead. You're watching the Golden Tiger Sports Network. Let's take time out. Hi, I am Lily Lanier, president of the Tuskegee National Alumni Association, and you're watching the Golden Tigers Sports Network. Thank you. Hey, Tuskegee fans. This basketball season, shop the latest clothing, gifts, and of course, basketball merch from your one and only Tuskegee University Bookstore. Visit us in-store or online at tuskegeeuniversityshop.com. See you soon. On this day for the AKAs, they are on hand here this afternoon watching the Golden Tigers engage in a good one with the Marauders of Central State, 48-47 Central State with the lead. Basketball will belong to the Golden Tigers as Julian Watson gets set to inbound the basketball. The sophomore just to the right of the scorer's table. Redshirt sophomore Austin Taylor handles the basketball now. On a weave, they give it to the junior Pennington. Back out, Taylor fires a three. Air ball by Taylor. Basketball over to Central State. Had to shoot that basketball before that shot clock violation. We're going right back into a media timeout here inside Chappie James with 7.44 remaining. Tuskegee trailing at 48-47 to the Marauders of Central State. Cheerleaders getting set to perform here at this break. Chance for us to thank one of our sponsors, Utilities Board of Tuskegee. It's a proud sponsor of Golden Tigers basketball on the Golden Tigers Sports Network. UBPT puts the power in your hands to enjoy the things that matter most. Utilities Board of Tuskegee, purpose, progress, people. Speaking of people, Charles, I'd like to shout out Miss Linda with oh, the yeah. Utilities Board. Man, she made some pound cake, <laughs> brother that we had an opportunity to sample up here. She cut off, they cut off two slick, thick slices, did Miss Frida down at the school ring table, took me a piece, I actually brought two pieces up and decided, I don't know why I decided to share it with you, Lord. I could have <laughs> just siphoned it off for myself, but I, I figured know. I'd be a good guy and look out for my partner. I know it's a holiday, you felt a certain thing, right? <laughs> Every other day of the year. <laughs> Listen, I'm feeling good so far. Look at these percentages, 79% from the line, five turnovers for Tuskegee so far with 744 to play. I'm hoping they can keep that turnover rate, that turnover story to single digits throughout the rest of the game. Walker, think about it. Beginning of the season, we first started covering the team this year. Those numbers were so staggeringly different and we kept saying that this team's got potential. This team has got potential. And we're starting to see that now. Last couple of ball games, those numbers have been going in the direction they wanted to. Half court set for the Marauders. Tuskegee trailing by a point. Jackson on a weave, bounce pass. Nobody turned to see it. Keys got it down at the block. Down inside, they challenged Thomas, who's back out on the floor playing with those four personals. And they're going to call. Is that Mickens on the foul down low? Yes, gave it to Mickens, third personal foul on him. Yeah, I've got three, yep. Paul says he's got three, our public address announcer. The distinguished. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Paul Carney, one of the best in the business. Listen, man, check it out. We were, we were watching some uh, games last night, and my buddy, Kerry, that was in town, he said, hey, that, that public address announcer was pretty good. 
<laughs> yeah, I can't tell you. It's been so many years. The first time I ever came to do a game in Tuskegee, and I just listened to him on the PA system. Shoot, just man. mesmerized. You yeah. Know, it's like, God, this guy's got the voice, and he knows how to call uh, a game in terms of PA, too. And, and he has officially crossed over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't wait to tell them that, too. Hey, man, you big time, man. You, you done crossed over. <laughs> you better be careful now with that. Oh, oh, uh, oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let me check my heart rate. It's still Save here, me, right? Charles. Save me, Charles. <laughs> Jumper way out front by Black. That one's off the mark. Tuskegee comes down with the rebound. Quickly up the floor, Mitchins. Cambridge calling for the basketball. Pennington across the floor. Thought of a three, goes to Draper instead. Draper to the rack. That was a big goal ten call there on Thomas. That, that one was, was on his way down. For sure. Not wise by Ravon Thomas trying to show his athleticism there when clearly that ball, the apex of that ball was, was on the way down. Yeah, we got 12 would. points for Kasami Draper so far. Charles, what do you got on your end? You got 13. You've got 13, okay. Yes, the free throw, yes, you are correct. Page at the block, got Draper airborne, but he missed on the shot. There's Cambridge with another rebound inside for Tuskegee. Page checks back in with those four fouls, Charles. We'll see if they recognize and go right at him and try to get him out of the contest. Good call. The left side, Pennington with the basketball now. Anthony, hard push right side to the rack, bounced it, but he missed, and Draper Thank on you. the inside, he'll be at the line. Bye bye, he's gone. <laughs> that quick he's right gone. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> that didn't take long. No, sir. That's what I'm talking about, Charles. There's a game within the game. Game recognizes game. Get him out. Got him out. So close the page on page. Six minutes remaining. Draper to the line to shoot. And trying to run the two man game there where Pennington was trying to get that pick set by. Draper, I'm like, no, just throw it inside to Draper sure. against yeah, Page and let him go up, and get yeah. him out of there. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Just let him get at it. Just get to it. Sure, that's right. Make him play you. Don't that's the matchup in. we want. Draper versus Page to get him out of there. But fortunately, uh, Draper with the offensive rebound got Page to follow him, and he's gone. He's done for the evening. Full six minutes remaining. Draper with the second free throw. Better result there for Kasami. Just had to regroup himself after missing that first one. Mm-hmm. Tuskegee by four now. Their largest lead. Half court set. Jefferson out on the floor. Moving on up. I knew you were going to say that, Charles. We've worked together much too long. <laughs> Had to get it before you. I know it's done. Cambridge ties it up on the floor. <laughs> yeah, I, I must admit, I was going to try to work it in. I was just waiting for <laughs> See there? <laughs> Jump ball, man. Got to be fast. <laughs> There you see Paul oh, Carney there. Man, look at him. Look at him. Legend right there, man. Legend right there. Paul oh, crossing over to the TV side. Yeah. <laughs> Our man. Glad he was able to do that for the network. Pennington, rainbow, air ball. Rebound underneath. Jackson, Xavier. They go back the other way. We beat the defense. Left hand lay in by him. Beautiful look away pass. Give the assist on that play to Sean Black. Sean Black looked one way and delivered the other. Tuskegee by a bucket. We're down to five minutes remaining in the basketball game. Watson, right side to Anthony. Draper sets the screen, trying to get a pick and roll there. Draper at the block, being shoved there. Finally got a call down near the baseline. Reed trying to catch up with that play. It's a couple shots no matter what. They're signaling he's trying to say he was in the shooting motion. Doesn't matter. Double bonus. We're shooting two, baby. Yeah, sign it back to the free throw line. Four fifty-one remains. Kasami missed on the first. <coughs> Are we being quiet on this or what? Yeah, let's go through our free throw routine right now. Here we go. Silencers in place. Got it. Oh, yeah. Yes, Still sir. Working. Still working. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> 
Sometimes you got to go to it. Sure. Right now, Tuskegee, that number is close to where they love to keep it. 73.9% shooting from the free throw line. Central State kind of headed in a different direction. For Tuskegee, that's what you want to see. Half court set for the Marauders now. Out front, three point bomb. That one's off the mark by Jefferson. The rebound on a putback. Strongly done on the inside by Xavier Jackson. Xavier Jackson now getting involved, Charles. I got him down with seven points in the game. Yeah, same here. Martez Jones back out on the floor now for Tuskegee. Trying to find some space at the block. They got it to him there. Jones with Reed guarding. Pushes back out, Chris. Mickens Give it to the shoot. Back to Martez. Hard push by Martez. Leans in, missed on the shot. But there's Jack Rabbit. Tez back on his feet. Got that <laughs> basketball again. He'll go back to the line. Charles, he took a page from Jasmine Manuel's book where if you can't get the rebound, you just tap it up and keep it alive until you reestablish yourself and go back and get it. He's so quick off the leap with his feet. It's the footwork that's the difference. I like it, Walker. You're spot on with that. Shades of Jasmine all the way. She got the impact belt for the women in their ball game. 17 points, 10 rebounds with a double-double. Martez Jones coming off a double-double against the Thoroughbreds of Kentucky State. Kept that basketball alive. That trip down the floor. Got rewarded one of two from the free throw line. He's got 10 points, double digits, and points. Six free throws tonight. Six made free throws in this game. Reed across the floor. Jefferson now. Tuskegee settling into that zone defense with less than four minutes remaining in the basketball game. Reed inside on Jones to the rack. Good challenge inside by Martez with no foul. And the basketball over to Tuskegee. Stood his ground, held his hands straight up in the air. Great defensive play there. It won't show up that much, but that's how you want to play it. So Watch Charles, it out front. Charles, this is a signature moment with the last 3.30 to play. How this young ball club handles this situation. Jones at the block. Oh, they throw it right away again. It's too slow on the delivery of the pass there. Saw something, but you got to be quick on the pass. Shouldn't have made that pass, Charles. There's only five seconds left on the shot clock, and Watson is the type of player that can create his own shot, so I'd rather he would have taken that himself, recognizing the situation. At the block, Reed powered that one up and got the basket for the Marauders of Central State. That's a good read by that offense, looking to get the ball inside to him for his fifth point of the game to match his jersey number. 54-54, under three minutes to play. Half court set. Watson rambles right side, now over to Mickens on the screen. Pennington got a three, drains a three for Tuskegee. If there's any Watson. such thing as a beautiful shot, <laughs> He's got it. Yeah, that thing just parachutes down and into that net every time. Nice job by Pennington squaring up. Let's just give you the three-point edge. Black and a half-court set now for Central State. Jefferson, top of the key now to Willie Jackson. Jefferson fires a three, missed on the shot. The rebound fought for two Tuskegee players right down there. They almost lost it, but Jones runs it down. He and Cambridge were fighting for that same rebound. Take care of my basketball. Under two minutes left now. Watson settles just on the Tuskegee side of the timeline. 15 to shoot. And Julian attacks left side. Seven to shoot. Mickens up top. Tight defense on him. At the block, Jones will throw it away again. Black back the other way. May have traveled. No call there. Jefferson for three. Missed it. Cambridge squaring up. Basketball over to Pennington. Hard foul off the floor. Take down by Reed on the back end. Off the floor. Now to Jones. That's the pass they want. It's right there. Yes. Pennington got it in. Jones finished. That's how you stuff it down. I thought for a second that Pennington was not going to utilize the five on four advantage. Antoine Reed was late getting back because he tried to save the basketball. And then finally Pennington recognized, hey, wait a minute, we've got the advantage here and pushed the basketball up the floor to a streaking Jones who flushes the bucket. Well, you got to know some of it's just probably stage fright because the last couple trips down the floor, they were late getting those passes in there. But the junior from the Kansas. 
City is able to pinpoint it inside to Martez. And Martez with the flash. Hey, he's got my shirt on. Huh? It's my Did brother right there. Shirt? My, my you shirt still on. have yours, right? <laughs> yeah, I still got my shirt. That's my bro down there. <laughs> now it is See that time. blue checkered shirt? Yeah, I like that. <laughs> I like that. that. Into the arena with yeah. that. Yeah. Well, I tried to, and then people thought I was a Dallas Cowboy fan. I'm like, no, that ain't a Dallas fan. He might be a Dallas Cowboy fan. Look at that shirt. He's got the shirt on, but he's got that cowboy hat in the back. Yeah. As he's walking by our location. Let's see. See that cowboy's hat in the back? With that blue shirt, yeah, that you see that? Like Smokey the Bear hat. Well, <laughs> do we got a shot of that? I'd love to pick that up. Let's see. Does he have a shot of that? Oh well, we missed it. I was gonna say, cowboy hat, blue shirt, blue and uh, what's that? What do you call that? Blue and silver, blue and gray. We got two well-dressed men here inside Chappie James. A minute twelve remaining. Tuskegee with a 59-54 lead. Black across the timeline for on the half court set now. Basketball tapper out almost stolen by Tuskegee. 60 seconds remaining. That one's taken away by Pennington after a tap by Cambridge behind that play. Now they can sit back and run some time out and force the Marauders to come out and foul. No shots under five, oh, I'm sorry, over five, unless it's an easy layup. Over to Cambridge, back out front. Across the floor, Watson has it. Pennington lurking out near the mid strike, just as a safety valve. Now six to shoot, and five, he may try one on the run here. Foul on extended, got it airborne, and yes sir, the junior's go. Love the fact that Pennington is taking ownership of the moment in his own hands. He's got 14 points. Oh, yeah. Nicely done by the junior. Jackson. Foul oh, on the three-pointer. Nice. He made the three-pointer and foul behind the Why? Line. Oh, my. Oh, my. Charles, why seconds. are we fouling Absolutely. Boy. Oh. 14.6 seconds to play. And Jackson squares up. Second personal foul on Watson. Fourth three-pointer by Jackson. In all tonight, let me count him up for you. 12 plus 6 is 18. He's got 20 points tonight so far. And the chance to make it 21 as he steps to the free throw line. Wow, that was unfortunate. Absolutely. He's about to snatch victory. The feed right out of the jaws of victory here. Well, Charles, there's nothing you, nothing you can do about what has happened. You can only plan for right now. Here's the situation. You've got one timeout left. After a made free throw, you can run the baseline. Uh, no. All right. Get it out. Here comes the foul. They get it to Pennington. Keep it in his hands. He's the best free throw shooter out there. Get rid of it. There it is. Years. They got Watson near the timeline, so Julia will be going to the line with 6.3 seconds left. Tuskegee with a 61-57 lead. You need at least one of these free throws here, Walt. Same scenario as we had a couple nights ago Indeed. where we needed to convert a basket. You know, we're, down, we're up three, needed one basket. I believe it was Mickens that was at the line. If memory serves me correct, we needed a late free throw, and boom, on cue, there it is. Watson. So, I'm Charles, yeah. I, I know it sounds elementary here, Charles, but no fouls. <laughs> no, Don't even get on the free throw saying. line. Keep Don't even do it. anything. Just like after this free throw, let them inbound the basketball and do whatever they're going to do. Let them score. Let them go down the court. Let them do whatever they're going to do. Don't foul. Yeah, good time to just tie your shoes if you need yes. to. <laughs> Watson knocked them both down from the line. That'll force a timeout by the Marauders of Central State, 63-57. Reminder that after this ball game, we're going to head right into the Tuskegee University National Athletic Association postgame show. To talk to Coach Taylor. And perhaps maybe a player if we can grab him as they transition off the floor. Kind of have to be mindful of that NC2A rule about the cool down period after a ball game in terms of bringing the student athletes up. But uh, we got a little grace here inside of Chappie James. Tuskegee. All right, something miraculous here at the end. And so go back to back winners. 
So, Charles, in review, what should we not do right here? <laughs> I don't know. Should we foul, foul him, Coach? Foul. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> no foul. Just let him go. Uh, Pennington couldn't resist that. He'll take the steal. Slot pass. Julian can't finish. Or Dylan trying to finish with a flush. Not able to finish on the dunk, but Tuskegee is able to finish their work at hand this afternoon. They win it 63-57 over the Marauders of Central State. So Tuskegee. Back-to-back -back winners here at Chappie James. They go three and four on this road stand here in Tuskegee. Winners over Allen University, and they met the number one team on the east in the Tigers of Benedict. Benedict did uh, continuation of this fine show. They were able to beat, this, to beat Tuskegee here. But back-to-back -back wins by the Golden Tigers over Kentucky State on Saturday. And here on Martin Luther King Day, they get another win over the Marauders of Central State, 67-57 in basketball action. So, 2-0 wins this afternoon for Tuskegee. Women, women win 79-55. And the men follow suit with a 67-57 win over the Marauders of Central State. Take a time out here and back with the Tuskegee University National Athletic Alumni Association, our Athletic Association post-game show just ahead. Tuskegee Nation and Paul Carney, Tuskegee University Public Address announcer, thank you for listening to the Golden Tiger Sports Network. Tuskegee University's founder, Booker T. Washington, said, Excellence is to do a common thing in an uncommon way. At many universities, big classes are common. Not at Tuskegee. We have small classes with a 14 to 1 average student to teacher ratio. This formula for excellence ensures individualized attention. You get to know your professors, and they get to know you. Know you well enough to recommend you for internships, research, graduate programs, and job opportunities. Small classes, big impact. It's all part of educational excellence at Tuskegee University. For all the ways you love to play, Academy Sports and Outdoors makes it easier than ever to get what you need and have fun out there. Get free shipping on your favorite brands at academy.com or get free curbside or in-store pickup at your Academy store. Hey, Tuskegee fans. This basketball season, shop the latest clothing, gifts, and, of course, basketball merch from your one and only Tuskegee University bookstore. Visit us in-store or online at tuskegeeuniversityshop.com. See you soon. Tuskegee didn't start off as a big campus. It started off in a small shack in the back of a church. The focus was always to build the community up. We share in a culture together that um, it's kind of hard to explain. You gotta live it, you gotta enjoy it. It's the HBCU experience. It's nothing short than, than beautiful. So my name is Dia Hunter. I am an assistant professor of construction management here at Tuskegee. The students make the institution special. You're gonna deal with students that are brilliant, students who have a mind for construction. They bring diverse backgrounds, diverse ways of life. I love sharing this with students. I love giving them the tools that they need in order to be great at it. Just because we're at HBCU doesn't mean our education is, is different. 
don't get me wrong, we have different values and traditions and culture and things like that. So we're gonna have different outlooks, different understandings on things, and that makes for a better company is Diverse Minds. I am Kaylin Parm, a graduating senior construction science and management major hailing from the Rocket City, Huntsville, Alabama. And to be a part of Tuskegee University's construction science and management program is to be a part of history. In this field, I'm, I'm underrepresented. I'm a black woman, so obviously it's not going to be a lot of people like me, and that's okay because we're still working for diversity. But the part that I would like to see more is the inclusion part. So yes, you have a black girl here and a Asian guy there, but do they feel comfortable in this environment? Do they feel like they're actually a part of the team? Let's start with HBCUs and coming here and getting to know our students and our programs. You'll see that not only are we coming with the knowledge that you need us to have, but we also have some different perspectives you might not have. We have to give back. Everybody counts or nobody counts, and that's got to be part of leadership. By Procore taking the lead on this scholarship program and partnering with AGC as a Grand Slam home run. Well, I'm Bob Bowen, chairman and founder of Bowen Engineering. We can make a real difference in our industry, in our community, in our society. We're a better place to go than Tuskegee or the, or the other HBCUs. The Lifting the Veil of Ignorance statue represent Booker T. Washington telling all the slaves what they can be in the world. Today, I think the Lifting the Veil statue represents what we are showing the world. Hey, we got great students that can produce great work in all disciplines. HBCUs produce top students. My name is Dr. Shauna L. Rogers. I'm a associate professor at Tuskegee University. Right now, diversity is what we need in this country. Specifically construction, we're running out of workers. The more that we are open to diversity, the more we open to giving these students chances, get to make everything better. Hey, we're here. It's 11 HBCUs that offer construction science, construction management. All 11 have great students. All 11 are well prepared. You just gotta give them a chance. And we're back live here inside Chappie James, inside of the Tuskegee University Athletic Association post-game show. And we're joined by a jubilant head coach, Benchy Taylor, as the Golden Tigers win at 63-57 over the Marauders of Central State. Coach, congratulations on the win. Oh, man, it was a, it was a hard, uh, tough, hard-fought game. And on MLK Day, yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's, a good, uh, it's a good gift on a very uh, memorial holiday. You know, we played well. Yeah, we were talking about it throughout the broadcast, and you mentioned it in the pregame, yeah. that if you all came out and did the things you yeah. want them to do, protect the basketball, yeah. and just play a very rhythmic yeah. concept on the floor, things would work out for you. You did that this afternoon. Yeah, we did that. They did a good job with Martez, but, you know, other guys stepped up. Dylan Cambridge had a great game. Kasami Draper, 16 and 14. And uh, we shot 74% from the floor. <laughs> I mean, from the, from the free throw line. Uh, sure. Um, and we only had seven turnovers. So if you do that, we got a chance every night, and and uh, part of our is a group effort, part of the whole group. We talked about that so much in the front half of the season that believe us, meaning Dwayne and I, we're talking about believe us. This team is good. Yeah. They've just got to get that rhythm in place and got yeah. to start minimizing some of the things that we're doing bad on the floor and doing yeah. the things that they needed. Yeah. They did it tonight from the free throw line and handled that basketball, managed it well with just the seven turnovers. Yeah. And that's what it's going to take. Yeah. You know, we, we faced a team that had two bigs like we did on the floor all the time. And I thought they did a great job of getting the ball inside and getting Martez in foul trouble. And that kind of threw, our, threw his rhythm off a little bit. And um, we got to go look at the film and see how we can get him in better position and not just sit behind, but you know, he got in foul trouble and that really hurt us in the first half. Um, and then we just regrouped at halftime and said, hey, it's our ball to start the half, let's get a score, stop, score, stop, and we got a chance.